Hey, welcome to the Riggin Farm YouTube channel. I'm at the property today, as you can see by the tractor behind me. The first thing I'm going to do today is finish installing the canopy on the tractor. The arms on the brackets keep swinging down and they don't hit me in the face when I'm on the tractor, but I do hit my head on them every time I get in and out of the tractor. I brought the drill with me so I can finish the installation. I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down and get started on it right now. I'm gonna give you some very helpful advice. Never leave your instructions out in the rain. It makes it a little more difficult to read them. I have the arm in the position I need it. So now I'm drilling a hole so that I can get a bolt in there and it'll stay put and not hit me in the head all the time. I got a hole drilled into the first side. Just need the bolt to come out this side now. Got it. Go ahead and get that finger tight, and then I'll come back and tighten both of them at the same time after I get this other hole drilled. Still quite a bit of wiggle. This isn't gonna come down any further than that and hit me in the head. Although as tall as I am, I'm pretty sure the canopy is gonna hit me in the head anyway. But while I'm sitting in the tractor, it's not gonna be a big deal at all. Actually, it being closer to my head's probably a good thing because it means better shade. Let's go ahead and get this other hole drilled, and once I have them tightened up, I can put the canopy shell on top and drill some holes and get those final screws in and it'll be done. Alrighty, second one's done. Let's get that bolt and get it installed. I'm not sure how well you can see, but the arm on the right is a little bit lower than the one on the left. The pilot hole in the bracket is not the same diameter that the bolt is. So there's a lot of wiggle room and I didn't go at it at the best angle, but I learned from that mistake and did it on the left side but unfortunately they're not even now. Hopefully there's a way I can get them to kind of straighten out and be a little more even. I placed the shell on top of the arms there and clearly they're a little uneven because it looks kind of wonky. Maybe once we drill them, it will kind of straighten itself out. I do know that it's giving us a little bit of shade now and that is exactly what we wanted. It's not gonna keep us completely out of the sun or rain, but it will be an improvement. The arms have these holes in them so we can drill straight through there to get proper placement of holes on the canopy shell. I'm going to put the camera down and get started on that right now. I got this first side done. Obviously they're not bolted on all the way. I need to get the socket wrench to do that. I got them finger tight for now. Once I get both sides done, I will come back with the socket wrench and tighten them up. The really fun thing about this kit is that it was missing one of the nuts, so I'll be able to attach this side but not this side. I'll probably have to go to Home Depot and get a nut so I can get this fourth one installed. It's definitely a little wonky, but it is installed. I'll go ahead and give this a try, see how it works. If I feel that it needs to be a little bit lower, I suppose I could always lower the brackets a little bit. They can drop it down at least a couple inches. Still missing that one bolt right there because they didn't give me the nut to go with it. I'm going to stand up in the tractor and see if I hit my head on it. And if I don't, then it's great. And if I do, then I'll just have to be careful. I'm standing in the tractor and I'm not hitting my head. I have about an inch of room, but that's all I need. I didn't hit my head trying to get in, and that's what's important. Sitting down. It's definitely not hitting my head. I'm getting up. And I didn't even hit my head with a spring up. So it seems about perfect. I'm going to go get some work done and see if I feel any shade. As you can see, I have over 27 hours on the tractor now. So my first impression of the canopy is that I need to get that last bolt installed because it is rattling nonstop as I'm driving the tractor because that corner keeps bouncing up and down on the arm and making a bunch of noise. That's okay, because I need to run some errands this afternoon anyway, so I'll get one while I'm out. I got that stump out of the ground yesterday while I was up here. I still have the stump bucket and the ballast box on, and my technique has improved a little bit. So I am going to attempt to get this stump out of the way as well, because it will give us an extra several feet of garden space if I go ahead and pull it up while I have the attachments on that are needed for the job. It's a quick progress report. I'm 30 minutes into this stump. This one might actually be even bigger than the one I did yesterday. 
Not sure obviously you can tell, but there is a giant root right there to the left of the stump that is bigger around than a lot of the trees that we have taken down. I'm not sure how far it goes, but I'm gonna try to find the end and start snapping it off. It's been about two minutes and I got it. I got it out in about an hour and 15 minutes. It's maybe a little bit smaller than the one I did yesterday, but it was still pretty big. Might be the second biggest I did and one of the fastest that I did. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm definitely improving my skill. Comment below if you're interested in knowing my technique. I'll be happy to share it in a future video. So I got that big stump, and as I was pulling out, I saw a little stump that I decided needed to come out of the ground as well. That one only took me about 20 minutes to pull out. Clearly, it's much smaller than the other one, and luckily, I don't need the grapple to pick this one up. Now that the canopy's installed, we can also install our lights that we bought a while ago. We wanted the canopy already in place before putting in the lights because we didn't want them to get in the way since they're a lot easier to adjust and position than a canopy would be. Not that we're working in the dark a whole lot right now, but it will be very helpful once we're living up here and sometimes there are going to be things that need to get done and those lights will come in handy. The tractor already has headlights installed, but when we put our big LED bar right there, it's going to provide lots of extra illumination. Once we do the install, we'll definitely be posting video that'll show you the before and after using the headlights versus that light bar. It's going to be a huge difference. Another really cool thing about having this canopy is that we can mount a little fan up here and provide a little extra cool breeze while working out on a hot summer's day. With all this work I've been doing the last several days, it's time to fuel up. This fuel tank is so much better than the last one I had that broke the very first time I used it, within a couple seconds. It's not as easy doing it while holding a camera, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it off while I fill up the rest of the tank. All right. Is ready for work, although I don't know that I'm going to do any more today. So much of our focus the last several weeks has been getting our garden area ready. We were supposed to get soil delivered today. They actually contacted me this morning and asked because of the rain that we're expecting tonight and tomorrow if they could postpone the delivery. Today's Tuesday and Ashley and I were planning on coming up here Friday anyway, so it worked out perfectly that they wanted to delay that because things will be a lot easier when we have that delivery if both of us are here. We also found out that they offer military discounts, and that works out pretty well for us since Ashley's a veteran. In the last month, or maybe even longer, I've only been at the entrance of the property, down the driveway, around the home site, and up in the garden area. I'm gonna go walk a few other parts of the property right now. I'm gonna go down the original logging path that leads all the way to the back of the property, but before I get that far, I'm actually gonna make a left and go down the alternate logging path that the loggers used when they came and cut down our trees. They put down some grass seed and some straw, and I'm gonna see if any of that actually grew. It looks like we have a decent amount of grass in the area that wasn't seeded, but that's fine because maybe it'll spread. Part of this area is actually where we plan on putting pasture where we're gonna raise cattle in the future. Look, there's green. There's definitely a lot of cleanup that's gonna need to take place before we get cattle here. All this area behind me where the trees are, we plan on taking out quite a few of those trees. And then this area up here, we plan on putting pasture as well. We'll fence in this whole area. We estimate it to be about maybe two to three acres. We're not entirely sure. We'll get all of that fenced in. We'll go ahead and plant a bunch of seed up there to get some pasture going. Once it's somewhat established, we'll bring in some cattle. We'll definitely have to supplement their feed at first. What's really great is they'll fertilize that area and make the pasture grow even better. The key is gonna be making sure we don't have too many cattle for the area because we don't want them to overgraze and to destroy it and prevent them from having good food. So here's the alternate path they did. And as you can see, there is some grass seed, but there is also a lot of water and that is not good. And how about that? The dry part of the creek is not dry. What we're probably gonna have to do here is dig a trench, install a culvert, put dirt back on top of it, and then allow all of this water that naturally flows to go from this side to this side without creating a little pond in the way. Let's see if I can walk past it without getting too wet. It's nice that the grass actually grew in a little bit. Very muddy and slick though. I'm assuming this is where he stopped seeding because there is definitely a hard break where there's a little bit of grass and then there's none whatsoever. But that's fine. It was great that he decided to plant grass, but we're probably gonna have to come through here with a box blade anyway and do some grading. 
you tear up all the grass anyway. So one of the reasons I'm going down this path is this is going to be the path to get to our chicken area. It's starting to open up a little bit right here. Some nice puddles. How exciting. I think where I'm standing is actually where they're putting in the septic tank. So I just up over this hill here. I'm over the hill and we're back at the home site. Our home's gonna be put right here. So we're probably not gonna have easy access with the tractor to get from there to this side of the property. I'm not entirely sure. I'm trying to come up with some backup plans just in case. I think what we're gonna have to do is burn this brush pile right here and then go ahead and install our fence probably from here up to where those tree lines are. Go all the way around. Maybe this whole area right here, fence in. I'm gonna have to find a nice spot of high ground that we can build our chicken coop. That way it's not sitting in a giant mud puddle and slipping and sliding and toppling and destroying itself. In our last vlog, I showed the chicken coop designs that I came up with. We have started compiling a shopping list and lumber prices have gone up, that's for sure, but it's not as bad as everybody says it is, or at least for what we need. The most expensive part is actually gonna be the plywood. The great thing about this area is we won't have to clean it up too much because the chickens won't mind the stumps and the trees, and it'll actually provide some natural protection for them. The dimensions of the coop are gonna be eight feet by eight feet. So it's not gonna take up a whole lot of space. This area right here would probably be good for that. There's a little bit of a slope here, and that's not a problem because we're gonna be using concrete footers for the foundation, and then we'll have some four x four posts that rise up, keeping the coop about two feet off the ground. The uneven terrain's not gonna be that big of a deal because if it's two and a half feet above the ground in one area, a foot and a half in another area, and only six inches in another area, the chickens will still be able to get underneath there, and it's not like it's gonna sink or sag where they're gonna get crushed. If it's too tight for them, they just won't go. And we also have to install electric fence for pigs when we get those. Our plan is to use the same energizer to power both the chicken coop fencing as well as the pig fencing. The chicken coop and the pig fencing will probably share a wall and it doesn't need to be a perfect square or rectangle or anything like that. It can be a regular shape, not a big deal. We got enough fencing for two thirds of an acre for the chickens and the pigs, they just need electric wire run, and we have literally a mile of that. Some of that will be used for the fence around our garden and to electrify the chicken coop, but we'll still have plenty of wire left over for the pigs. Our plan is to probably do about an acre or so for them. We just need to make sure that there's space to walk around the chicken coop area to get to the pigs. I'm gonna head back to the home site area now. I'm gonna be leaving pretty soon, and I think I'm gonna get a little bit of drone footage since I have some time. At least I don't have to walk the same way I came because I can just walk straight up here. It is definitely muddy here. We're gonna have to get this drainage situation figured out fast. One thing that's really nice is this larger size gravel that they put down for the pad for the shipping container, which they clearly put in the wrong spot because they couldn't get the truck down here, has held up relatively well with all of the rain we've been getting. It would be great if they'd put a foundation of this for our entire driveway and then put the smaller rock on top of that. But what do I know? I'm not a professional. Look at the quality work of this driveway. The erosion is really bad. And like I said in the last video, I really shouldn't have to use the box blade on the driveway every single time it rains. That is just ridiculous. Once or twice a year, sure. Every couple years, ideal. Every time it rains, not acceptable. All right, let's go ahead and get the drone up in the air.
We accomplished quite a few things in the three hours I was up here today. We got the canopy installed on the tractor, I removed two tree stumps, and I gave you a quick little tour of what the property looks like, as well as some of the things that we're going to be doing in the very near future. As always, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. We appreciate it so much. At the time of this recording, we have 247 subscribers. We're really close to our first mini milestone of 250. Our first major milestone that we want to reach is 1,000 subscribers. We would really appreciate it if you could share our channel or your favorite Riggin Farm video with friends and family so we can get to that number as soon as possible and we can set our next goal. We'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up and comment below with any feedback or questions you have for us. We'll see you next time. Bye!